Welcome back. If you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know that I have terrible soil. I also have two smart friends named Steve, Steve Solomon and Stephen Edholm, the former being the author of many gardening books and the latter being the creator of the Skill Cult blog and YouTube channel. Both Steves recommended I add biochar to my garden in order to improve it over time and to increase the exchange capacity of my sand. This is all well and good, but in order to get biochar, we have to make it, because we're certainly not going to buy it. And because we're cheap, we want to make it for free. Over the years, I have seen many biochar making systems ranging from cones to kilns to burning wood in a smothered trench. Though I am no expert on the intricacies of biochar, it's really just charcoal with a fancy name. And there are many traditional charcoal making systems which are usually labor intensive. I don't have time for all that. I need a lot of biochar for my garden and I need it for spring. Having seen the Contiki biochar cone method developed by Dr. Paul Taylor and Hans-Peter Schmidt and Stephen Edholm's trenching method, I decided to dig a small conical pit in a sandy area out back and burn biochar in it. We don't have the resources to go making a big metal cone right now and for the scale we need it's probably unnecessary, though I would like to have one anyways just because it's awesome. So instead we're going to do the free route and dig pits to burn in. It's really quite simple to make biochar this way. Are you ready? Here's how you do it. First, dig a nice little pit with sloping sides within reach of a water supply. Our pits are a couple of feet deep. Then you just gather your fuel and cut it into short lengths that will fit nicely in the pit. Branches around an inch to an inch and a half in diameter seem to work best. You're going to need a good pile of these. Gather some small sticks as well for the first stage of the fire. Now get some paper or pine needles or leaves or itty bitty sticks or whatever you have and put it in the bottom of your burn pit and light it up. As it fires up, feed it small sticks. Once these are flaming, start to add larger ones. It makes sense to progress in layers and there's a reason for it. What you want is to get one layer burning well and turning black before adding the next layer on top. Keep the layers flat on top of each other, encouraging the fire to burn to the edges of the pit. Each successive layer chokes off some of the air from the one beneath, keeping it from melting away into white ash. Add layer after layer until you reach the top of the pit, then give that last layer time to burn until the sticks are glowing red and starting to turn to ash around the edges. When you hit that stage, soak the fire with water, extinguishing it completely. Don't quit wetting it until you're really and truly sure the fire is out. If it stays lit beneath, you may have the whole thing reignite and burn away into ashes when you're not paying attention. Once the coals are cool, get rid of any unburned chunks of wood you see. There are usually a few sticks that didn't burn all the way down into charcoal. If you like, you could start crushing the char at this point. I don't bother because it's too much work, though I plan to experiment with some crushing systems in the future. Now that you have your biochar, it's time to charge it up by letting it soak up minerals and or biological life so the char doesn't eat up the nutrients in your soil. If you plow biochar right into a garden bed, it will soak up lots of fertility and render your vegetables very unhappy for a year or more. I had very good success soaking my biochar in Dynagro, which is a balanced liquid fertilizer used in hydroponic growing. It has 16 elements in it, which provide all that a plant needs to grow. I'll put a link to Dynagro in the description below this video. I'm also adding Neptune's Harvest Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer, and I'll also put a link to that. This will give me extra trace elements and some biological activity. Along with that, I'm also adding a quart of kelp meal, as well as a cup or so of pink Himalayan salt. All the minerals of the ocean right here. You can charge your char with a variety of things, including soaking it in manure, tea, or urine. You really don't have to buy anything. You just need to think, what high fertility thing could I soak this in so it doesn't pull the nutrients out of my soil? You can also take the long approach and add char to your compost pile, letting it absorb lots of nutrition while also being colonized by bacteria and fungi. With my last batch of biochar, I dumped the charcoal into a drum of Dave's Fetid Swamp Water, which is an anaerobic compost tea I make regularly. It's free and you can learn how to make it in my book Compost Everything or in some of the other videos on this channel. Make sure you soak your biochar for a couple of weeks at least, then you can spread it on your garden beds and turn it in. Congratulations! You've now improved your soil for a long, long time. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more cheap gardening hacks. 
Also make sure you download my free composting booklet in the description below. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spoon